today. Tell me your favorite marketing tool set. Warm up the chat while we're talking. Remember to flip yourself to panelists and attendees. That's so your fellow students can see what you have to say. I'm Chris Glody. I'm your instructor. You know that. Um, still working through my clicker. We're going to be do so, doing something very exciting and new today. Tom's going to set it up right now. We will be broadcasting live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So this class is going to be live. We're talking a lot today about social media. So we're going to share what, we're sh what we are learning today on social media. We're gonna kind of walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Let's see what's going on here. Um, all right, and I'm gonna check constant contact. Uh, somebody's very impressed. I think uh, Alexandra is very impressed with our social broadcast. This is something we figured out last week, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you use organic social activities to drive interest, to drive conversion in your products and services. All right. And as always, thank you, of course, to our um, thank you, of course, to our favorite sponsors, including Feather which is your online advertising solution. They work with over a thousand associations or they have worked with over a thousand associations to do online media. And in fact, I just saw a lot of feather answers there. I wasn't paying too close of attention to the chat when you were giving me your favorite software solutions, but I wonder if Acumen was in there. Acumen is the association analytics dashboard solution that pulls data from all over your organization into one spot. So you can understand quantitatively what is happening at your organization. Um, and then finally, or next, we have Open Water. Open Water is the virtual event platform for the association industry. So many organizations are using that. I have a client that used it to do, uh, not really hundreds, about a hundred virtual event sessions at their semi-annual conference. Prop Fuel talked to us last week. That was it was Brianne that came in last week and talked to us about conversational marketing. And I know you got an email from Prop Fuel Tool too that said you can follow up with Brianne, learn a little bit more. And then my own company, Ricochet, is on the scene. We are here to help you um, do your digital marketing. We do digital marketing strategy, and digital strategy, including technic infrastructure and copywriting and a lot of the things that we talk about in class here today. And I see a comment here from Rachel that says open water is great. So Rachel is using open water. We have an exciting class today, a little bit different format. I have a very special end surprise to you that's not even on the agenda here. We are going to, of course, be doing our exercises. We always do those. We're going to talk about the types of different media, and then we're going to dig deep into social media strategy. Uh, so the exercises, we're going to start with the exercises. I have a little different setup today, so you're going to see me looking down at my screen. I'm going to try to look in the camera, but you'll see me che cheating down at my monitor a little bit lower. Um, uh, I think it would be great in these exercises. Remember, these are things that you can do while we are going through class. So you can, you can uh, parallel path these. You are multitaskers extraordinaire, every one of you marketers. I know this is your key, your key skill set. So we would love it if you would share a little bit about yourself and tell everybody you are investing your time in this class. This is not an easy class. I saw somebody posted a bat or a badge or certificate that they got from somebody else the other day. It was like a two hour class. This is not a two hour class. This is a two and a half month class and it's live and you have to be here. It's by appointment only. So tell everybody you're doing it. Tom's going to share that link for a LinkedIn post. If you want to comment on the one that we just put up, or if you want to share it yourself, make your own post. That's great. You could also, Tom's going to share our Facebook post and Tom's going to actually maybe share the live link for our YouTube live broadcast. So if you're a YouTuber, you can comment on that in YouTube. All right. I mentioned the LinkedIn in group. Tom, if you could uh, put in the, I know we got nothing but links flying at you. Put in that LinkedIn group link. I'm going to wait till I see it come through. Um, everybody's waiting with bated breath, Tom, to see if you are going to put in the LinkedIn link, uh, the LinkedIn group link. Hopefully I had it ready for Tom. Is it there already? It's not. I'm going to keep talking while Tom's scrambling for it. Uh, uh, there it is. Fantastic. So here's the deal with the LinkedIn group. 
I told you already that list of favorite TV shows from last week is there. Pretty soon, I'm going to have that list of favorite software solutions. But also in there are some messages from the last semester's students, including Roddy, who reached out to me this morning and said, Chris, I just put a post in that group. I would love it if you could all go look and see what Roddy's post is in that group. I'm going to tell you while you're going to go look at it. Actually, maybe somebody can tell me what, why, in the chat, let's somebody tell me what Roddy's got posted up there. So take a look at the LinkedIn group. If you don't have access already, be sure to click and request access. We'll get you access after the class. All right, Caitlin is right. Caitlin is correct. Roddy is hiring. Roddy needs an email specialist. And he's looking for the type of people that would sit in this class and be working to improve their skills. Roddy was a great student last semester. We all knew him because he helped with a lot of, he actually managed the LinkedIn group last semester himself. So Roddy wants somebody that can work virtually now. So you can work from home or wherever you are. And then he said, ah, our association is going back to the office. So they do need to be Chicago specific. He would like to find somebody with some good email marketing skills that's based in Chicago. And you can reach out to Roddy. You might comment a little bit about it. I'm sure he would appreciate it if you would share that post or share the information with your network. And if you're interested, now would be a great time to reach out to Roddy and tell him, tell him hey, yeah, I'm looking to do it. Oh, and that's not the only post that's in there. I see Tom Felger is telling me that there's another one from Meg Palumbo. So she's got something, a marketing director role. So that's probably a little bit higher than the email role that Roddy's got. And that's cross country, around the world, stay wherever you like, get the work done. So no, they're not going back to the office. Um, and Catherine says, that's the one she sees. So um, I'm gonna just ask, Kath, I'm gonna ask Tom to make sure that he's got all the posts in there. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Tom's taking care of it. All right, guys, so that LinkedIn group is not just for lists of your television favorite shows and for favorite software. I'm using these as little uh, honey traps to get you to go and look to see what's in there. But I, there's more substantive content and there's a greater opportunity for you to connect with each other as students, both in this semester and to past semesters. So I hope that you'll use that, uh, that resource and I hope that you will help Roddy out and Meg out. All right, let's keep plugging ahead. Now, every week I kind of harp on you guys and I say, connect with me on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm not gonna do that anymore. This is class four. You heard me talk about it three times. Now I'm gonna harp on you about getting your profile picture um, looking more professional. So Tom is going to share another link, 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 links all around. This one is to a YouTube video, I think. Honey Traps, yep, it's an old school name. Um, before, there, before there were thirst traps, there were honey traps. So uh, Tom is gonna put that link in. This is a guy that does a pretty good job of explaining some tools that you can use to make your, your profile picture in LinkedIn look super professional. I do not think that quite the, the photos that, the, that I have here on this slide are what you're gonna do, but there's some good parts to this. Those photos had a big picture of me in the middle in a kind of professional looking suit and a, they had distracting background and you shouldn't have that. So I talk a lot about LinkedIn because you guys are the marketing leaders and the digital leaders at your organization. So you set the standard. You set the standard. People are looking to you in all sorts of ways for how they should be doing digital online. And they want confidence that you're doing it well yourself. So that LinkedIn profile is important because if you're going to be recruiting people like Roddy and Meg are right now, they're going to, those people, people that are interested in positions are going to kind of evaluate you on your LinkedIn profile if they're good digital folks themselves. Also, someday, maybe you're going to be interested in finding a job someplace else. Maybe it's with Roddy or Meg, and you want a professional presence on your LinkedIn profile. So I'm not going to ask you to connect with me anymore. Thank you for all of you that have already. I am going to start hitting you up and say during this class, even you can be updating your professional photo on LinkedIn. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to jump into the meat of the matter now. Um, we are going to talk about, I jumped, maybe I jumped ahead too fast. We're going to be talking about types of media, you need to know the five types of media. 
And Jamie, I am in fact telling you that unless you're trying to get a job with Blondie, probably that t-shirt with your Blondie t-shirt is not where you want to be in your LinkedIn profile. Thank you, Tom, for sharing that link. Everybody, you can watch that on the side while you're listening to me. Five types of media. So I warned you, we talk about this slide all the time. If you want good marketing at your organization, good digital marketing, you need to have good marketing organization design, good marketing skills, good marketing tools, and you need good marketing strategy. And what we're gonna be covering a lot of today is good marketing strategy. So let's have at it, everybody. Let's have at it. Yeah, well, you gotta see, I'm gonna let you see me now. So five types. The first type is owned media. And this is these five types, as we go through these, these are gonna be kind of chat intensive conversations between you and me. So I wanna talk about owned media now. You all probably have read the slide. I'm not gonna repeat it. Tell me right now, what are some examples of owned media at your organization? Let's see what you got. Website, blogs, website, white papers, YouTube, podcasts, events, websites, 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 websites. Oh, one I really like, magazines, newsletters. I really like that one too. Online community. So that's a really interesting one that did not come up last semester. That's a great example. Social channels, case studies, blogs, webinars. Okay, social media is not. That is not one of the owned medias, but owned media is something that you as an organization own completely. And my favorite example is the one that I mentioned before. I called it out. You guys got it already. That is magazines. Associations, unlike so many other uh, uh, organizations, so many other for-profit companies, we are content generators and have been for hundreds, not hundreds, but over a hundred years. It's kind of what we do. We generate content. Back in the old days, we used to have meetings and people would get up and speak and tell, talk to their, talk to their peers. Then we kind of got into the business of printing um, periodicals. And so very few businesses have their own magazines. And because associations have this rich heritage in printed periodicals, they went on and were quick to adopt like online content generation. So you've got websites that are stuffed with content. You've got magazines. Somebody mentioned newsletters. You've got email newsletters. You've got newsletters. You've got blogs. I saw lots of blogs. All of this is content that you're creating yourself and you host or produce yourself. That is owned media. I own it. It's all me, owned media. You got owned media? That's number one on our list. Eboks is another great example. So, oh, the Podcasts, yes, kind of, sort of, I'm a little bit on the fence. So you, you generate the content, you own the audio file, but then sometimes the distribution of the podcast, you don't really own as much. So you put it through players that push it out there. I'm gonna say, yeah, we're gonna call a podcast own media. So this is important. Um, and I jumped right into the five here. I want you to also realize that when you're doing marketing strategies, this is a great checklist. I And I, I kind of do, do this in my head. I go one, two, three, four, five. So when I'm doing summer campaign strategies and I just, I'm in deep in the middle of summer campaigns for my clients right now. When we were doing this back in March or for one of my clients, we started in May, it was a little late. We put together our strategic plan at the beginning. And the quick little trick that I do is I just list these five, these five media types out when I'm getting to the advertising plan for that strategy. And I go one, two, three, four, five. And you know, everybody forgets the owned media plan and then we're shoehorning it in at the end. And I always put it at the beginning. That's free media. Oh, um, well, we're gonna have some quizzes on this later. So I got a good quiz question for you about owned media. But now we're gonna jump ahead to the second part, which is paid media. So I asked you when you were logging in today, what kind of software tools you use. And probably some of you listed your favorite paid media management software tools. I saw one of them, it's Feather. Put in here, what are some of the tools that you use to manage your paid media? Take a look at what that paid media means and tell me what some of those tools are. Feather, Google AdWords, yes. Google AdWords, yes. Google AdWords, yes. Feather, Feather, Feather. Hootsuite is not one, I don't think. So I don't think you can manage paid media through Hootsuite. We're gonna come back to this, okay? Feather, Google, Google, LinkedIn, 
So I don't think Informs does this either. So I just saw Informs. We're going to come back to this. We're going to pay. Okay, we're actually going to come back to those two things right now. So you folks that are using Hootsuite right now, maybe you can educate me and your other students. Does Hootsuite let you manage? Of course, it lets you manage your organic social posts. You can use Hootsuite to like schedule a LinkedIn post or a Facebook post in two weeks and get all your tags set up and set the time of day and all of that. But can you manage an online ad purchase through Hootsuite? Tell me yes or no. Who uses Hootsuite to manage their paid online media? Oh, you can boost posts. Okay, that's kind of, that's, that's the workaround. So you might have an organic post and then through Hootsuite, you can manage, you can manage the payment to boost it. Okay, Adnan, I think that, uh, and yes, okay, so Audrey says, yeah, that's how you do it. You can do boost posts. And I got a link from Adnan. I'm really sorry, man, if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, yeah, and he, yeah, I think you're used to it. My last name's Glody. So I think you and I are in the same boat. Nobody knows how to pronounce our names, right? Okay, so yeah, you can boost your organic posts on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook, probably Twitter too. So that's good learning for me. I didn't think about that little loophole there on the side. Primarily, you are using Google AdWords, Google Display Media Networks, and, um, and Feather, that's the common one in the, our industry, to manage your paid media. So I think this is good. You guys understand what paid media is. We're going to jump ahead to our third type here. What is the third type? It is earned media. Okay. Earned media is good old-fashioned press relations. So I'm going to give a really bizarre example. It's top of mind because I was just reading like TMZ, I think. And I was talking about how the Sex in the City reboot is full of drama, which I'm sure is all manufactured. Actually, they're using earned media to talk about Sex in the City. But Samantha on that show, she did PR. That was all earned media. Her job was to get, to get, didn't she do like restaurants or something? Who's a Sex in the City fan? You can tell me what Samantha's uh, PR clients were. That's, that's earned media. They were, she was in charge of getting newspapers and magazines to write about her clients. Uh, and who knows? Yeah, there was like Smith Jared, but I don't, I remember that was like her boyfriend or something. Celebs, oh, it was celebrities. Yeah, so she was in charge of getting like coverage on the Tonight Show or newspapers talking about the celebrities. And that's earned media. They didn't create ads. They didn't write anything up. Um, they didn't write articles and put it out there. She wasn't doing Google AdWords, that's for sure. It was earned media. Okay, um, we're going to jump ahead now to placed media. I love talking about this because nobody does it. So take a look here. Take a look at what place media is. I'm actually gonna recap this one. I'm gonna read it and we're gonna talk a little bit about it because I wanna make sure you understand this fourth type of media. Place media is third-party press that you fully produce or that you fully produced or significantly produced. So here's the scoop. There are lots of online trade journals that take articles from people like me. So in fact, I do this a lot for my business at Ricochet. I write an article and then I turn it over to associations now and we do a little bit of editing and then they run it. So the associations now isn't writing that article. I write the article about some topic in the industry that's, uh, that's timely and then they run it. And included in that article, I include links to my business or oftentimes I'm writing, this is part of a white paper that I've written, researched and written. So I'll include links to download that white paper even. So place media is when somebody like me writes an article and gives it to a trade journal. Tell me, in your industries, in your organization, do you guys use that tactic very much? Actually, it might even be kind of where you're the publisher. I bet this is more common. You have members that write the articles for your publication and they get their name in there, maybe a mention of their, yep, get a mention of their company. So I see some questions here and I, maybe we're gonna pa pause on this one. Op-eds, yeah. So op-eds, if they're labeled op-eds, they're kind of opinion pieces. So typically, place media, you're trying to write more factually and more agnostic, more about, um, more about thought leadership than about opinion. 
articles monthly, yeah, po um, products during movies. So um, that is place product. And I would say that probably falls under this category too. I think probably none of us have been fortunate enough to be working on work with some, working with Steven Spielberg to get our can of Coca-Cola placed in, no, working with Steven Spielberg to get our bag of Reese's Pieces put in E.T.'s hands. That's probably the first product placement that I can remember. I don't know if they paid for it. Probably some student can quickly Google this while we're talking, but that's an example of product placement. And we're talking about placed media, which is typically thought leadership placed in a, in a, in a publication. And we are kind of service and thought leadership as association marketers. This, this is the space that we play in. Okay, Justice says, important news flash everybody. Reese's Pieces did pay for it because M&M Mars did not want to pay for the placement. So that's really good. I do remember E.T. chilling out uh, Reese's Pieces string Halloween commercials. And I thought that was the coolest thing. And to this day, I like Reese's Pieces. All right, social media is our fifth category. Social media, like you guys know what social media is. 10 years ago, if we were talking about this, maybe not everybody knew all of it, but social media is unique and I think it's almost native to you all. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and more. We're gonna talk about the and mores a little bit later today. That's social media. Any questions about social media? So own media, oh, you gotta know what these are because in two seconds, we're gonna go into quiz time. Owned media, placed media, earned, I'm trying to do it off the top of my head. Own media, paid media, earned media, place media, social media. Make sure you got it straight because it is quiz time. All right, we now's a good time to stand up, twist around a little bit, stretch out because we have some trick questions. And Tom and I were having a conversation about this the other day. Tom, uh, do you wanna say hi to everybody? Let them know you're here. I haven't done a good job of warning him on anything. There he is. Hi, everybody. I'm here. And Tom is sporting. So I went out and I got my beard cut just for this class. And Tom went out and he said, I'm going to top you. And can anybody tell what's different about Tom? <laughs> Tom had glasses before. Tom doesn't have hair now. So <laughs> Tom had a full head of hair, shaved his head. Yeah, they say imitation is the best form of flattery, right? So I'm, I'm angling for a bonus or a raise. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Wrong strategy. <laughs> okay. So, Tom, we've got some quizzes. Let's fire it up. Let's see what we got. Okay. Num uh, here we are. Sorry, that wasn't on my screen. Number one, owned media. So five types of media. We're talking about owned media. is published by your association and is always free. These are the newsletters at your association, the journals, your website, your blogs. We went, your, uh, your electronic newsletters, kind of your podcasts. All right, so today, Tom, can you remind me, Tom, how many students we have in class today? Yeah, we have 140. Great, all right. So I would say our magic count is I don't know, over a hundred students. To, so I do expect you, if you're in class and a quiz pulls up, I expect that you are participating in that quiz. And I see Tom has closed it. So Tom, we've got 72 people saying yes and 41 people saying no, that's two to one. And the yeses mostly have it. Everything is a, is a trick question today. Always free is the zinger on this one. So no's, you also have it. When I was the chief marketing officer for the American Bar Journal, uh, the American Bar Association, we did monthly ads in the ABA Journal, which was a printed magazine that we sent to our members. And the zinger is that always free part because they charged me out of my budget to put an ad in that, in that magazine every month. And I complained and moaned to the board, to the executive director, the, the magazine had a board. I went and complained about it to them because I felt like I was promoting member and member benefits, which just helped increase their circulation because they got more membership and more people to circulate to. But I was not successful. So the always free part was not true for me. And they charged me because they had costs associated with it also. And because they also were trying to, tr they had a PL that they had to manage. And so if I could do a budget transfer from my 
expenses to their revenue line. They got credit for it. Um, they got credit for it. And so I see Kristen's like, yeah, I got the same problem at my organization. And yeah, Nick, uh, Nicole also is, is zinging me on the always free part. She's saying, look, it's not always free also because we got some production costs to even put it in the ads. And that's a great point. So Nicole has an excellent point. We, we also had designers. So there's labor at least to develop the ad and then to traffic it over. So we had somebody that was in charge of getting the ad to the journal on time and following up and knocking heads around. So everybody, this is familiar to everybody. Okay, Tom, do you wanna take us to poll number two? All right, poll number two, paid media is third party content where you can run ads. Paid media. All right, there's a clear lead going on here. Look guys, if you are in class, I do expect that you are voting in these polls. This is a live course. That means you have to be alive. Tom's gonna to be in charge of shutting this down. If, if you voted, you can stretch out. You guys, this is a nice time to uh, turn the cameras off if you've been on Zoom all morning. So we've got a clear winner here. Uh, it is third-party content where you can run ads. So I tried to make this one a little bit more straightforward. Yes is the answer. Yes, that is third-party content where you can run ads. Paid media is it's kind of the ads that run on that content. Maybe that's the tricky part. Um, yeah, so that's the tricky part, right? And maybe this one I'm gonna try and clean up for the next semester. So the media runs on that third-party content. And I don't want you to feel bad if you don't agree with the answer. These are like all in the gray zone, just like life. The important part is that you understand what these media types are. Tom, let's go ahead and move on to the next media question. This is class, this is question number three. We're running right down the five part list here. So earn media is super easy because others write about your product or service. So this is what Samantha Jones, Samantha Jones did in Sex of the City. She had, uh, she had news outlets, page six in the New York Times. No, New York Post, page six in the New York Post, write about her celebrity clients. Paid media, earn media is super easy because others write about your product or service. I know. So this is, so Rose, tell, Rose, tell everybody why this is a trick question. What's the trick question part there? She put it in the chat. I was asking her to repeat. Yep, there we go. Not e super easy is the trick part. It's probably not super easy. I'm going to say yes or no is the right answer here. It's easy because you don't have to make the ads. You don't have to coordinate with everything, but you have to give people something to, to talk about. And you probably have to work that a little bit. So yes or no, but PR, this is earned media. Tom, let's go on to the next right. Next question. There we go. Question is, placed media refers to the, to the illegal practice of ghostwriting favorable articles for publications. Okay, keep your polls up. There we go, looking, looking good. And this is why we, okay, we have a clear winner here. And that is because it's not illegal. And I told you I was doing it and I'm not admitting to anything illegal. So I write articles and I get them placed in industry magazines. So you can write a little, read a little bit about my thought leadership. This is what we do to um, promote ourselves in maybe a little bit softer way, but sometimes for greater reach. And typically you do not pay for, for earned, what am I saying? You do not pay for placed media. So that means that um, you can control some of at least your paid media expenses in this way. All right. And Tom's gonna to pull up question five. You guys can all read it while and start voting. I'm gonna say, uh, give a shout out to the people that are watching this live on our uh, streamed social accounts. So we're really happy to have you joining us for class today. I should mention that class is um, open for enrollment next semester in uh, which starts October 7th. And you'll, get a, you'll be able to participate in 10 live classes just like this one. And we're doing an online poll right now with the students we have over around, I think 150 students joining class right now. And they are, they are saying social media is always free because Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube are free to use. And most students are saying, no, it's not always free. So in the chat, students, tell me, why is it not always free? What's the cost there? I thought it was free. Okay, you can do paid ads. You're absolutely right. 
Now you can do organic posts. We were talking about Hootsuite earlier. Those, uh, Facebook doesn't charge you for those like, organic posts. And there we go. Shakima has the answer. Uh, you got it's there's expense associated with creating those too. Tom charges me to do the social posts. I don't get it free either. I guess if you if you were doing it yourself for your own business at home while you're watching TV, which is what I used to do, it's kind of free, but it takes your time. Those labor costs, soft costs. That's the that's the word. Nicole, you uh, you're on the board again. Labor costs are really soft costs. There's costs associated with it. Okay, Tom, let's go ahead and plug along here. So we're gonna close the polls now. We are jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead here.